Hi guys, it's Brittany. So today I'm gonna do a movie review and today I'll be reviewing Mrs. Doubtfire. And it was released in theaters on November 24th, 1993. And it was directed by Chris Columbus. And it's based on the book by Madame Doubtfire by Anne Fine. And music composed by Howard Shore and the cinematography by Donald McAlpine. So, you know, this is just such a really good movie and of course, you know, we get this great cast. Um, Robin Williams who plays a freelance voice actor who, you know, He's doing, um, you know, voiceover, um, and so of course he quits his job because of something he felt that wasn't quite right, and so he just left, and and I don't quite blame him for that either. And then with Sally Field, she plays. Uh, is she's a businesswoman and she you know she feels that um, you know with her being busy and everything she feels like things are not going in order the, the way that she hoped it would be and so when you know when Daniel when he throws a party for his son she is not happy with it at all, despite of her son's um, bad grade report. And so she cuts the party short, you know, pretty much over. And so they, you know, of course, they get into an argument and it leads to the point where she feels she has had put up with this for so long and she feels like somehow she was been more of the responsible one and doing all the hard work when he is not even trying or he's trying but somehow she's probably not seeing he's probably is trying his hardest and yet it leads to the point where she somehow feels that this isn't going to work anymore and she wants a divorce and of course this this breaks Daniel you know this makes him really sad because you know he cares for her he loves her and yet I don't think he would ever thought she would end up saying that to him and that they had came when just when when he had thrown his on the party and so yeah pretty much of with that and what was going on it, w it was just like bad timing it's like if like even if she was gonna bring that up I don't think it's um I don't think it's best to bring that up just when he had done something nice for his son to, to throw a, a birthday party for him and because she was very upset over it and because she ended the party and because she somehow felt like she had to say what she had to say of, of that but still you know it to me it just seems like okay this um can this be taking place somewhere else where it wasn't just after she ended the party, you know? So, yeah, you know, and that's what I felt was kind of unfair. <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not sure what happened there. Somehow, <laughs> it felt like there was something in there and I had to swallow like, oh, I'm not sure why that that was weird, but there's 
As I would always say, there's always a time and place for everything, but I just felt like in this case of that, of that scene was just not fair, only because he had done something really nice for his son, and yet with her feeling infuriated and everything, which even though I don't blame her for feeling what she's feeling, but yet I felt like for her to bring it up at the moment she ends the party, it was just bad timing. Like, why not mention the day after, or maybe somewhere private, maybe somewhere where the, their kids would not hear it, but yeah, and so of course as we can see that, um, you know, of course they do end up getting a divorce and their kids are, are broken. I'm sorry, I thought I saw something crawling up there, but no, okay, all good, no. Nothing there. Um, but yeah, so that is, is sad um, when something like that happens. And it is, I think not only is it hard and tough on on those who do get a divorce, but and I think it makes it much harder for the kids, you know, as well. It, it really does. And, but... So he, you know, he does um, end up, you know, visiting his kids. He does end up getting um, visitation rights to visit his kids um, where they can visit him though, but he has to get a job and, um, and, and a place to live. So of course, you know, he eventually does, but then, um, and of course, he does end up getting a job, though, but um, now, I, I think at first it was hard for him to get a job, but even though he did eventually got a job, um, but at the same time, he had something else on the side, and that was because, um, and you know, and because with the d divorce and everything, he thought who would you know, be there to, to watch, um, you know, his kids and to able to take care of them and spend time with them, especially when their mother is at work. So, you know, of course he had an idea of where if she was going to hire a babysitter, he would be the one uh, to babysit because um, in the scene where when she goes to pick them up from his place, she mentions a babysitter and he doesn't quite like that idea because he feels, well, why need a babysitter when you can have me over since I'm their father? And all, on that, yes, I do agree with that though. And so she feels that she needs someone else who will be there, who will be more reliable to, to be there to take care of them and, you know, spend time with them while she's at work. But he feels, you know, hurt by that. <clears throat> and, you know, who can blame him though? And so, but even though she has mentioned this to him, a thought came to his mind that there is no other babysitter she's gonna hire except him but of course and uh, what i also love is the scene where he is making phone calls to her and each one he's um he's doing like these Im impressions of like sounding like different people and it sounds like she's getting these strange phone calls and each one she like hunts up and she's like, what is going on? Like, how am I getting these odd phone calls coming through? But then, then he, um, of course decides to use a more, um, pleasant, um, oppression, uh, to appeal to her, uh, 
you know, it, on a more friendly approach where she picks up the phone, she's like, okay, this person sounds really nice, easygoing, very friendly, and then she, somehow she feels, you know, comfortable, and she feels like, okay, I'm willing to meet with this person, this Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and so, and of course, so because now he had created this new identity, it's like, yet yeah, he goes to his brother to have um, a prosthetic done, you know, makeup and everything to make him look older, of an older woman, to pose as a nanny, you know, babysitter, just so that way he could able to take care of his kids while she's at work and to spend time with them. I'm so sorry. Uh, unknown number calling me, so I don't know who this is. So I'm, no. You're intruding. So <laughs> I have it on silent though, because that's just what I do when I'm in the middle of doing my videos, I have my phone on silent just because if it was on vibrate or on sound, you know, then it would go off and I would not want any any kind of intrusion to to interrupt anything of the the video that I'm doing. So yeah. Hmm. So that's why I always have it on silent. But anyway, to to get to get right to the point here. But um, as we can see, that he he is actually doing his best. Um, very convincing as this older nanny. But of course, at some point his son and daughter know but not his youngest daughter so she can't know about it because then she would give it away and pretty much end up telling um her, her mother about it and of course that would make her even more furious if she had knew from the beginning or she had like if she had known even just secretly but yet that would just like, piss her off so it's like, uh, no, uh, uh, but yes, this is a really good, um, funny film. It's, it does have this great funny moments where you're just laughing out loud, but it's also a more of a heartfelt movie where you do get these sad parts because of the divorce and because, um, of the kids. Well, of these kids not able to see their father as much, you know, because how they they miss him, and so yeah, we can see, you know, that's what we see, and um, so yeah, this is just really good to watch and. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to keep saying, uh, because it just, I don't know. I, I, it just kind of sounds annoying, I think. At times, it was too much. So, but yes, overall, this is a, a good movie, and I just love the cast. Um, Robin Williams was perfect for this role. And I don't think anyone could have done the role better than he did. Um, but he is missed terribly. Um, may he rest in peace. And with Sally Field, she did great with her role as well. Like, wow, so, you know, she's just really great, you know. And, and of course, and I think what I forgot to mention is that, you know, because of going through this before she ends up meeting Stu. Um, this guy she had um, 
that she liked and he had admitted to her that he had always liked her but he never said anything because of the fact that she was married. So he's like a very well-mannered, very respectful man. And so it's like, um, and I think that's what she, what she likes about him. And I think that's what most women like about men is, is when they're well-mannered and very respectful towards people and towards women in general. So yeah, and I know I like that as well. But, and of course we can see she's just, things are going well between her and and Stu and and as we can see that Daniel he is getting jealous because he still loves her and he can't see her with anyone else and yet he can see she has already moved on and she she's happy but even though he feels jealous because of that but yeah I feel like despite his jealousy um, of her moving on so quickly and being happy with someone else that she likes who he likes back but yeah I think somehow I don't know I think he should have at least somehow try to really come terms with himself to realize like okay I know I might be jealous but if she's happy then that makes me happy that she's happy. But I know sometimes it can be hard to be happy for someone if, if it seems like they moved on so quickly, they're already happy with other things that are going on or with someone else. So I know it can be hard to be happy for someone in the beginning. But it's like, it's like, okay, feel what you feel, but when you realize how happy they are, you gotta, let them move on because they can't go back to to that you know but I would say this movie in a way is relatable especially for those who have gone through that and for those who maybe had parents who went through a divorce and that is just um sad you know it is um, so yeah, it is something that's very tough to go through, but it depends on how everyone takes it and depends on how they grow up without their parent, you know, their father or mother. Like either way, it depends how well, how well they take it and depends, um, if certain things are going to get to them where it's going to make things much harder for them or if they just want to able to let it go it, you know what I mean if they somehow don't want to remember that because it's just too painful and because maybe to them it's like you know what what happened happened um, I don't need to be reminded of this so I'm just moving forward with my life so, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, this is my review. Yes, this is a good movie, and I love the performances um, of this cast. And Howard Shore did a great job with composing the music for this movie, making it um, light-hearted of those scenes, and also making it heartfelt even within those sad scenes as well so he did a great job so I I do appreciate everyone's hard work on this movie and it's just great and enjoyable to watch so and yes I do have some funny parts but I think I'll be able to share that another time in another video so my rating would be an A. Um, definitely like 80%. Um, 8.9 out of 10. And 4 stars. You know. I 
die for something just now. <laughs> um, forgive me, I had to pause because I didn't want to sneeze on camera because that would just not be, that would just not be appealing to, to see a sneeze, you know, at least I don't think so. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this movie review and um, to see more movie content like this, please subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified when I upload and leave a comment down below on Mrs. Doubtfire. And that's all for today and I'll see you at the movies.